So the United Nations has an open seat on its Human Rights Council. See, uh, one of its members, Muammar Gaddafi, got pulled from his chair after more than 40 years of repressive rule and state-sponsored terrorism. He was pulled by a mob that killed him. So the United Nations needs another human rights champion to take the mad dog's place. Lo and behold, I think they found one. Guess who's waiting in the wings? None other than Venezuelan autocrat Hugo Chavez, leading a government that has jailed judges who side with anti-government agitators. This year, a Human Rights Watch report described Venezuela as having a precarious human rights situation. The organization said its citizens' right to free expression was curtailed, conditions in its prisons were deplorable, security agents were engaged in extrajudicial killings, and Hugo Chavez is the United Nations' next human rights role model. Well, it's par for the course. They also count Cuba, Nigeria, and China among its members. They too sit on the Human Rights Council. Look, there's new polling by Abacus data here in our own country confirming that Canadians are becoming more and more apathetic about the UN's role in the world. And no wonder, an organization that's making a habit of slamming Canada time and time again while going soft on dictatorships like Chavez's in Venezuela, even appointing tyrannical leaders to oversee areas that add insult to injury, such as their Human Rights Council. I mean, the whole thing is a turkey. It's more than absurd. Clearly, it's time for Canada to explore pulling out of this gong show, taking our half a billion bucks in taxpayer contributions. I didn't say a million. I said a billion, half a billion per year. It's time to pull it out. For more, let's go to Sun News reporter Brigitte Pellerin. Brigitte, welcome back to the program. Good. Yes, good day to you, Charles. You forgot Saudi Arabia. They're also on the Human Rights Council, uh, of course. So Venezuela, I suppose, would go very nicely with this. Listen, every time you have a story like this, you know, you have to staple your eyeballs into place to prevent them from falling out. You roll them so hard. What is wrong with this organization? It's like a backwards dog, right? It barks at friends and it wags its tail at the, all the bad guys out there. And there's something really wrong with this. All right, uh, and the hair on this dog is very ugly and getting uglier by the day. Look, uh, all over what would thing. happen? I just want, because, you know, people say things like, uh, you know, Lily has said it, I've said it, you, others have said, you know, let's just pull out of there. Yep. And uh, we, we get told, oh, no, that would be very controversial. Well, it can't be controversial unless there are specific interests in the country, political interests, that would make it controversial. Who would be offended by us saying, we've got better things to do with our future than spend a half, half billion dollars? on things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I've said that myself too, uh, by the way, that we should consider pulling out of it. So uh, count me in your camp. There are a number of people who have objections to this. Some of them are uh, ideological. Some of them are silly. Some of them are well-founded fears that perhaps if we pull out of this, there are still good things that the UN does sometimes, like the food aid program. That's one thing that, you know, if we pull out of this, then perhaps that could endanger or uh, jeopardize those programs. And my answer to that is always, well, listen, if we didn't spend all that money on the UN as in organization maybe we could start our own food aid program or simply decide to make a contribution a voluntary contribution either to the UN food program without being part of the organization or simply with other charitable organizations that do really good work in places around the world that really need it it seems to me that it's not just the UN that can do good things like sometimes distributing food that there's other organizations out there that can do the same and that you know being in the UN we grant our moral power our moral uh, you know, uh, just uh, authority on this organization that, you know, really at best is uh, corrupt. So I don't think that we gain much by being there and we could do much better use of that money and that moral authority uh, on our own. And I think if uh, Canada did uh, take a stand and uh, pulled out, maybe other countries would follow. Certainly would stand, it would start a, a national worldwide conversation about what the UN was supposed to be and what it's become. It's become exactly. a, a really, exactly. really uh, bad joke. Uh, talk about um, bad jokes, and you've got to talk about this new mm -hmm. rap video out of Quebec. Brigitte, what have we got? Manu Militari is a rap artist from Quebec, a very popular one. He won the Felix for best uh, rap and hip hop artist. That the Felix is sort of the Quebec equivalent to the Junos. He won that in 2010. This, uh, what you're watching right now, is a video from his next album, which is uh, set to be released on September 11th. This video is called La Tante, uh, this song, so the wait. This is the story of an Afghan man who has been brutalized in the storyline uh, by uh, Canadians, by soldiers, and who lies in wait 
uh, waiting for Canadian soldiers to show up and which he calls the enemy and to bomb them and, and assassinate them. Uh, you see images there, pretty uh, graphic stuff. The lyrics are very graphic as well. There's no mistake in there. There's no error in translation. I, I've listened to it enough times. I know what it says. It calls the Canadian forces the enemy and we hate them and it's justified to take violence to defend Afghanistan against aggression. So uh, this uh, video is just coming out, I believe it came out last week. It's being played, by the way, on Music Plus, which is, again, Quebec's version of uh, Much Music, uh, which is owned by uh, Astral Media, and, and Bell also uh, has been bought by Bell. So if you're unhappy about this, uh, this is where you should make your concerns known. Uh, this is a song, you know, my colleague Annie Dufour on TVA last night did a report on that one as well. She talked to Chris Alexander, who's now an MP with the Conservatives, who used to be Canada's ambassador to Afghanistan. And his view of this is, listen, 80% of the civilian victims in Afghanistan are the victims of Taliban violence uh, in scenes very much like what you're seeing right now on your screen. We should not be romanticizing these kinds of events, even if you, you know, invoke artistic license. Uh, he doesn't call for censorship, of course, but would very much encourage Canadians not to glorify this sort of thing. And uh, my colleague Annie also talked to uh, uh, retired Colonel Michel Drapeau, who calls this uh, blasphemy. There's no other word for him and uh, than blasphemy and says we're mocking and making fun of the sacrifices that our soldiers and their families are making. And on a side note, by the way, we're still looking into numbers. My colleague Daniel Prusilides will be writing this story, but we've already found that in the last couple of years, I believe since 2008, this artist received in federal uh, subsidies alone of just over $100,000 of your tax dollars. So you're paying. Is this a piece of garbage running on uh, Quebec radio stations, Brigitte? I heard that it was. I have not heard it myself firsthand, but I've read reports that, yes, indeed, it was uh, being played out there. He's a, he's a famous uh, rap artist, and, and there I must confess that I'm not really into the rap scene in Quebec, so I can't tell you exactly how popular he is, but I gather that he's quite uh, the artist. And uh, the, on the plus side, though, on his Facebook page, there were very, uh, a number of very critical comments about this particular video from members of the Canadian Forces. So it's fair to say on Quebecers on Canada Day will be hearing this thing that gives comfort yeah, to our Yeah, although in Canada Day in Quebec is usually a moving day. This is when a lot of people uh, switch apartments, especially in Montreal. So they're not really busy uh, flying the uh, Canadian flag. Brigitte Pellerin, thank you very much. Uh, you. you have a happy Canada Day. Dominion Day to you too. Thank you so much.